same way that I mentioned about that girl, uh, Crystal, whatever, that girl that got Harry Styles tattooed on the side of her face, right? I think there's some people out there, some kids coming up in the entertainment industry who kind of think that any attention is good attention as long as people are looking or uh, absorbing your art and what you're putting out there into the social media space. So I'm sure for some of these people, they're probably going to think, you know what? No, fuck it. I'm going to do it anyway. It doesn't really matter, right? I'm going to do what I want to do, get myself where I need to get to, and then kind of from there build. I would say no. I would say it's probably not worth it. I'd say you probably you shouldn't do something like that. But again, what do I know? I think in the long run, concentrating on your actual artistry is probably the best way to go about things. But I'm sure there's probably a lot of kids out there who are probably looking at a 6 9 situation and think, you know what? If I could do maybe 10% less of the madness that he done, in terms of involving myself with street gangs, all that malarkey, and still garner the same at- amount of attention by trolling, I think kids would do it in a heartbeat. We've seen a few people kind of copy the same sort of model uh, coming up now. We're going to name no names, but I think in, 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 in an era where people are kind of like, you know, keep communicating this lie that there's too much media out there that's hard to cut through, I think people are going to use any kind of uh, you know, tactics they can to kind of break through and to kind of cut through the noise. And unfortunately, the sixth situation is going to be one of those examples for it. Uh, one of the saddest situations that come out of it, effectively, is the is the case of the baby mother, right? She's been caught up in this whole story, this whole shitstorm from the moment that, you know, you know, they, of course, 6 9 and this baby mother weren't actually together romantically, but, you know, she had to be publicly embarrassed, quote unquote, by 6 9 him kind of parading around his new girlfriends or new female company here and there on social media. Then she kind of got dread through the mud for being accused of, you know, maybe uh, sleeping with uh, one of Six Nine's best friends in terms of Shutty, who was also his ex manager. And now, you know, through the whole idea of maybe Six Nine is snitching, we're not sure if it is true. Allegedly, he is. But if that is the case, then now she's going to be put under the, the microscope again because, you know, her, effectively her family is coming under, is coming, uh, is in, you know, is in danger because Six Nine is now cooperating with the feds. And that's one of the, that's a part of the story, similar to the, you know, public shame that you see on, online. That's part of the story that no one really talks about. The idea that you know the collateral damage of one person's decision, right? There's un- there's a uninte- there's the unintended consequences of you kind of going out there and doing what you're doing, and you know there's a there's a actual footage of here from her talking about it on TMZ that I'm gonna play a little bit of it so you guys can see, but it's quite sad to hear her speak about a situation by and large. But this is kind of her point of view regarding the whole situation. The play, my. Reaction initially, I just think it's disappointing. How come? Um, cause I expected way more out of the situation. It's just sad, honestly, to see all these men dragged into something that's really ugly. I've mm. been with him seven years, and the fucking the fame that he's had within a year, the success is just sad to see how it's going now is just disappointing and it's sad do you feel that you and your daughter are at risk and that maybe is the probably the point of the matter right it's the fame that's probably the issue that's probably what kind of fucked him over in the end of it it was the chasing of the fame he wasn't necessarily whenever you heard him talk brag about his billboard hits whatever it was more so a justification of how big he was right we don't necessarily know how big he was but justification right you got he kept get um billboard hit billboard hit billboard hit um but it wasn't necessarily a pursuit of the artistry. He didn't want to become the best rapper alive or the best musician alive or the best entertainer alive. It was all about the fame, wanting to be known, wanting to be known. And I guess coming from a place of depravity, coming from a place of having nothing, I guess when you have nothing, quote unquote, the idea of fame is that it's going to get you out of your situation. It's going to allow your family, family and family, family to never suffer from poverty ever again. But I think by and large, when you enter the entertainment space, when you enter the artistry space or when you want to be a musician, I think what actually guarantees the financial security of your family is concentrating on becoming a better artist, right? It's concentrating on it making sure your sound evolves throughout the years, throughout the decades, so that you can continue doing this until you're old and grey and people actually want to hear what you have to say and you garner new fans along the way. That's probably one of the things you want to do. And I guess a fixation of fame is only going to get you here. Now, I not to say everyone's going to end up in prison, but I think focusing on fame is going to is going to effectively take you off course. You're going to end up doing things that you probably never thought you would end up trying to do because you're chasing this fame thing that is so fleeting, right? Because who's to say, even if he was out, that his whole his whole buzz would have not died after a year anyway? 
right? Because it's so fickle, it's so fleeting, the idea of fame. You have to always be in the pursuit of actually perfecting your artistry and that will effectively keep you out of madness because when you focus on your artistry, you won't care about running away with nitrate blood. You won't care about uh, trolling uh, Chicago goons. You won't care about all that shit. You'll just concentrate on being in the studio, knocking out song after song, getting albums out, performing on stage, touring all over the world and connecting with your fans. That's all you're going to care about. Um, in a sense, yeah, absolutely. He left, he did what he did. He made his bed. Now he has to lie in it, but he didn't think of how it's, it's going to affect others. He's only thinking about himself in the situation. So, I mean, I'm left to pick up the pieces of whatever mess he, he's made, which is, which is, and has always been a thing. That's that's the saddest part for her and and his family in general. You heard that a lot. You've heard that even with the um, with the El Chapo case, right? Um, effectively, the only person holding El down El Chapo is the mother of his children, right? The young, the young, attractive young, the young lady who's kind of been praying herself all over social and it's kind of been one of the star witnesses of the cases. But every person he worked with previously, people who El Chapo made millions of dollars with, have all of a sudden turned on him and kind of are snitching on him, telling all their stories. But the people that are having to pick up the pieces. Uh, the parents or the family, the aunties and uncles, but usually it's the females in the situation that are the ones having to kind of hold the family together. And in this case, with as the six nine allegedly snitching, you never know what the consequences are going to be. We're hearing stories that six nine is you know spending and godly, ungodly amounts of money to make sure his mother is safe and make sure mum is out of harm's way because you know him cooperating with the feds might lead to consequences on the streets, which we're hoping that doesn't happen. But there is a it's a common thing I'm hearing in terms, even in the you know in the high up drug circles, right? That people just get into this life. They know exactly what the rewards are. They know exactly what the consequences are. But they still, when they when push comes to shove and they're under pressure, because by and large the, the federal the, the federal bureau, the federal agents for the most part, um, the information, most of their good information comes from people actually snitching. It doesn't come from the investigations because if everyone actually abides by the code of no snitching, right, and uh, having that honor amongst their men. Then no one would any, no one would ever be caught unless people make mistakes, right? But by and large, no one would ever get caught in that respect. People just do their time silently and kind of get out um, with their uh, dignity and their honor still intact. But with federal agencies whacking people with fucking you know f- f- triple digits sentences, people are getting really nervous and quaky and kind of thinking, you know what? Fuck that! I actually don't want to spend uh, all my waking years in this hellhole when I've been used to living a life of luxury I'm going to snitch on my friends and make sure that I'm okay in situations so a bit selfish in that regard he's probably not thinking about his family but he is in some respects so he's hoping that you know if he can if he can work out a deal with the with the feds he can maybe reduce his sentence but I'm not sure how much more they can reduce it to if supposedly he's looking at 47 years I'm not sure him cropping is going to bring it down to less than double digits it's still going to be a long time to be in prison and I don't think he has the same amount of rapport or goodwill that someone like a Bobby Schmurda would do where people would be waiting for him to come out I'm not sure it would be the same thing with um, with 6 9 but you know that's less, that's that's neither here or there he uh, came back to you and said he wants a relationship with his daughter how would you feel about that I don't feel like he's in the space right now mm-hmm. and so I feel like he, he's in a space in life and a solid situation I I can't feel comfortable allowing him to bring whatever he has with him into my daughter's life. That my job is to protect my daughter at all costs. And even if that means him. And essentially that is there. That's where we left that, right? Like that's the saddest part, right? She's still leaving the door open for six nine to come into her daughter's life, of course, because he's the father of a child. But you know, that's the consequences of this kind of lifestyle that people don't talk more about, right? There's a little daughter involved in this. There's a baby mother involved in this that's been accustomed to a certain, you know, to a certain quality of life that I don't know where that income is going to come from now. There's a family that's support, record, um, relying on him. I think Joe Biden mentions it, right? One hit record is going to feed a thousand families, right? And that is true, that kind of saying, right? Not so many people are going to depend on him and now he's put himself in a position where everyone's kind of like scraping to kind of, you know, um, you know, put their lives back together again. 
which is kind of sad by and large. Um, sad way to end it. I'm hoping it's going to be a lesson learned for the kids coming up, but I, I'm, I assume not because I think some kids will think it's worth it. Some kids will think that they can kind of do it and not end up in trouble like Six Nine did. Some people, like everyone's got that kind of idea. Like, nah, when I come in, I'm going to do it better. I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. But I think by and large, when you mess with the streets, there's only one way it can really end: um, death or jail for the most part. And unfortunately for Six Nine, it's going to be jail. Um, so that's that.